Good rainy day, everybody. Zach here with RevZilla, and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider, where we learn about motorcycles as we ride. Our guest today is the Triumph Scrambler 1200X. That is a 1,200cc engine, as the name suggests, and after that, it is all Scrambler. You got off-road wheels and tires, you got a high exhaust pipe, you got retro looks, all for sale for a little bit under $14,000. So there's lots to talk about in the Scrambler class, even just within the Triumph lineup. There's a slightly bigger, burlier one than this, and then there's a smaller one. We'll get to all that later. But also in the world of motorcycling, there are lots of bikes that sort of claim to be, or at least look like Scramblers. And it'd be good to know which ones are legit and which ones aren't. Doesn't seem like there's a better day than a rainy one to find out. Let's ride to work, everybody. Alrighty, everybody. Before we get going here today, a quick reminder that this RevZilla video is brought to you by RevZilla. <laughs> In addition to creating uh, videos like Daily Rider or the Shop Manual or CTXP Adventures or the High Side Low Side podcast, RevZilla also is an e-commerce company. Sells parts and accessories for motorcycles and apparel for people who love them. So we create this content in the hopes that it'll make motorcycling a better, more informed, more entertained place. And the next time you need something for you or your bike, like say, I don't know, a cover or a rain jacket, <laughs> uh, we just hope that you keep RevZilla in mind. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. All righty, everybody. So this is the 1200X. There is a 1200XE, which most importantly has much longer suspension and a much taller seat height. Uh, there are some other differences as well we might get into, but those are the big differences. And when I talk about the sort of big brother, that's what I mean by it. The engine is pretty much shared by the two 1200s. It is a 1200cc parallel twin, 270 crank, so it's got that nice bassy thump that we'll hear. And the big thing with the Scrambler is this high pipe which uh, of course keeps the exhaust pipes from going down underneath the engine as they often do on standard motorcycles. And theoretically, I mean, you know, realistically actually, keeps them away from getting crunched by um, whatever obstacles you might be rolling over when you're scrambling. It does have some drawbacks, which we'll talk about, but it is a very classic look. Uh, it does as much for the aesthetic as it does for the practicality of the motorcycle, if I'm being honest. And um, yeah, big part of the, the scrambler look and feel. Aside from that, it's designed to be a pretty basic motorcycle. Some updates for the 2024 model. Uh, the X here got Nissan calipers, still has braided lines, which is nice. Marzocchi suspension now, rather than, I think it was Saks before on the smaller one, and then Olin's on the Big Brother, and now I believe it's Marzocchi on both, but you can confirm in the written article by my friend Ari that was done quite well in my opinion, and the link to that is in the description of this video. Back to the task at hand, another scrambler keyframe is the 21 inch front wheel. And not only do these Triumphs have wire spoke 21 inch front wheel, but they're also tubeless, which is kind of nice. Yeah, aside from that, pretty easy to understand motorcycle, right? It's a steel tube double cradle frame with classic sort of frame design. Chain on the right, another sort of a classic Triumph thing to do. Nicely shaped retro looking tank, uh, a flat brown seat, a couple of fenders and a handlebar. And that's pretty much it. So let's fire this sucker up, which requires holding in the clutch and waiting for a moment for the Triumph. You can hear that nice, polite, bassy thump. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Uh, it's a good engine, and we will experiment more with it. Uh, we'll talk more about the dash, but this is the sort of um, uh, base bike dash has uh, fewer features and isn't quite as handsome as the one on the larger machine in my opinion all right i think that's pretty much all we need to talk about oh one, one quick little note here i love that triumph triumph does a really good job with this kind of stuff it's all led lighting it's all modern but there's little bullet blinkers that are sort of like round and classic looking and this tail light that has a kind of like 60s and 70s vibe do a really good job with that like bmw r9t great bike super fun but there are parts bin blinkers and stuff which i think um i don't know makes a difference depending on who you are. All right, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is change mode from road to rain. <laughs> Why not, right? I mean, come on, we're, today's the day for it, if nothing else. All right, enough jabbering, Zach. Let's roll. Mm -hmm. 
right, as we jump into talking about specs here, I should mention that the audio might not be quite as good today because I gotta leave my uh, chin vent cracked here to let my visor and pin lock insert breathe a little bit because it is a little moist as I've brought up a couple times at this point. Oh, perfect, train crossing. Good timing. Actually, jokes aside, you all know I like to talk about seat height while I'm at a stop, so this offers a perfect opportunity. 32.3-inch um, seat height on this here Scrambler X, I believe, which doesn't seem especially low, I don't think, but it is, I think, pretty agreeable. I am six foot two, and I probably have longer legs than the average bear, but it's an easy flat foot for me. Not the case with the bigger bike, which I think is two more inches of seat height measurement, and that bike feels pretty big and tall. Uh, let's see, what other specs can we talk about right now? We got four gallons of gas, a little under, in this cherry red fuel tank. And when the tank was full, it weighed in on the Daily Rider scales at 509 pounds. So it's a full-size motorcycle, no doubt about it. And price is $13,600. I rounded up just a little bit, which I believe is $1,500 or so cheaper than the larger brother the XE which I think is 15.2 anyway yeah the rundown on pricing there and the last uh, measurement of note I suppose would be the old horsepower numbers I think it's 89 horsepower something like that which doesn't seem like a lot from a 1200 cc twin it's a pretty big engine but we'll talk sort of more about the ins and outs and the pros and cons of the engine as we get going here so I mentioned the seat height, which is pretty agreeable. I think one of the things you're going to notice right away when you sit down on the 1200X is that the seat is pretty flat. It's an old school look and it's a very open feel. Like you can scoot back six, eight inches and the height of the seat doesn't really change. The width doesn't change very much. It is basically a big foam plank and in my opinion, not quite enough foam but more on that later for now i can tell you that in general the riding position is really really agreeable it's super nice place to be it's a wide handlebar that sits just where you want it the pegs are pretty far forward but not too much so it's a very upright relaxed comfortable riding position especially at these speeds anyway but of course you're not always going to be going 25 30 miles an hour are you you're probably occasionally anyway going to go shoot down the freeway or go somewhere at speed and that being the case um, you know the 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 ergonomics will change a little bit because wind and weather protection apropos for today's ride are minimal I would say <laughs> that won't come as a huge surprise to anyone who knows anything about motorcycles there's no fairing or bodywork or anything here so of course there's nothing to protect you from the wind and the weather and on a day like this the problems with that are pretty clear to see but even on a dry sunny day if you bomb down the freeway at 70 or 80 miles an hour if that's how you like to travel you're gonna find that you're leaning on the wind pretty hard the one benefit of course is that big flat seat which allows you to scoot back and lean into the wind a little bit change the uh, rider triangle in a way that can be beneficial I think the worst part about the whole rider comfort situation highway or not is the seat which i think is uh i don't even know if it's the shape that i've already talked about so much as it is just the foam isn't thick enough or i think the foam's not firm enough that's what i think it is for me anyway i'm almost 200 pounds and i just kind of sink through the foam and i end up sitting on the pan i mean not literally but like i'm sitting on something harder than seat foam right now and for jaunt across town totally fine but if you want to ride for more than like an hour or something i think you're going to be kind of tired of it I'm not sure I'm ready to call it a mistake, but it's an odd quirk for this bike to have considering the whiff of quality that it has about it in general. I guess since there isn't a whole lot to talk about with, uh, you know, highway manners and whatnot, we can talk a little bit about scramblers in general. I think there's a little bit of a misconception sometimes that scramblers have to be off-road focused. And of course, the origin of scramblers was taking street bikes and putting dirt tires on them, kind of like Triumph did at the factory with this Bonneville, basically, right? It's a 1200cc Bonneville, and it's been scramblerized. And I think the scramblers have a real benefit in the world of modern motorcycling from that standpoint, because street bikes are often what people actually sort of need or what makes the most sense, but maybe a basic street bike doesn't look cool enough or act cool enough 
for your particular proclivities. And in that case, the Scrambler can be a good bike because ultimately it's a pretty basic street bike underneath. It just has wax in its mustache, rolls its own cigarettes. It's cooler, basically. As for fuel mileage and range, blanket on the number that I got, 40 something, four, low 40s, maybe. I don't remember exactly. We will put it on screen right now. The bottom line is four gallons of gas on tap. Your range is not gonna be huge, 100 something miles. Long distance touring is not with this bike at four. But like I said, the engine's in a pretty mild state of tune. And if you ride it mildly, you're gonna see pretty good fuel numbers, I think, because it's not super thirsty for the size engine that it is anyway. Now, since we are in rain mode here, we can do a little quick trash control test over these expansion joints here. I'm just gonna goose it as we go over this metal bit here. And you can see the trash control light illuminating there. We'll, we'll give it another try here, a little closer view. Um, yeah, trash control kicking in pretty obviously. Those expansion joints and any pieces of metal like that are wickedly slippery in the wet, by the way, so be very careful. But it's a not super intrusive trash control in those moments, and I bring it up in this scenario because I think this is a good example of how behind the scenes modern electronics can be. Rain mode is, if anything, not quite slow and kind of muted enough for me. I think that considering how big the engine is and how burly it is, there could be less power on tap in rain mode. But it is nice and mild, it does work just fine, and the fairly intrusive trash control setting that we noticed over those expansion joints there is a good example of sort of the bike trying to keep you safe even if you don't even really notice it. All right, now as we come into the uh, neighborhood section of the ride here, um, I'm gonna change ride modes, but first we'll try our first footless stop here on the old Scrambler 1200X and I fudged it up. Um, hopefully we'll get some good ones in here. Uh, first I'm gonna change that ride mode that I said. I'm gonna go to road mode, why not? See if we can get a footless stop here in, in the rain. Nope, I messed that one up too. So not going very well here. Scramblosis, what do you think? My failure at these footless stops, I don't think totally represents the Triumph Scrambler's manners around town. I think it's a fairly easy bike to ride. Like I said, the seat height's uh, fairly approachable. There we go, that's a nice footless stop. Um, and uh, the things that it does well, like clutch feel, uh, throttle response, brake response, all the sort of ways that you interact with the controls of the bike are really smooth and kind of delicate and refined. That goes a long way because it is a pretty big bike. <laughs> it's not hugely tall, but it is big enough that if you were intimidated by it, it wouldn't be the wrong thing. And I really appreciate that Triumph seems to care and work on those details. The basic round town review for this bike is that it's, it's not like designed for, for riding in a city. That's not the sort of like brief that's not those aren't the pictures you're going to see in the brochure probably but fact of the matter is that it's going to be really good at that kind of thing all right time to be very cautious as we take this first actual corner that we've gone through <laughs> delightful engine delightful one of my favorite things about this engine actually is I think it's tuned really nicely from a sound perspective. It makes a nice sound when you're in the cockpit, but it does not sound particularly loud off the bike. I am partial to the exhaust system on the Speed Twin 1200, which I think just sounds kind of ferocious and excellent. But in general, I really like the way this Triumph engine feels around town, and especially the way it sounds. On to Lover's Lane here to talk about passenger accommodations, and they're nothing special. The seat's real flat, like I said, and that means unless your passenger is fairly tall, they're probably not gonna be able to see anything really. It's not a cross-country passenger bike. I mean, any bike is a cross-country passenger bike if you try hard enough, <laughs> but I wouldn't necessarily recommend the um, Scrambler 1200 for long hauls with a passenger. I think actually the passenger might get a sort of a wider piece of the seat than the rider does, depending on where you sit, which is an odd benefit for a motorcycle to have. But yeah, in general, I think round town passengers is where you're probably gonna wanna draw the line with this bike. And quick sidebar, not able to talk about that while I use the cruise control because there is no cruise control on the X that is reserved for buyers of the Upspec XE, which we talked about. And uh, maybe a little bit frustrating that they wouldn't just put the, put the switch on the, I don't know, 
I get it. You know, you got you put you save the good features for the more expensive bike, but also, come on, you know. Anywho, here we are dipping into the twisty road section of the Daily Rider route, and I don't really know how to evaluate. I think a lot of twisty road capability on a Scrambler 1200 is going to be based on expectations and you're ex expecting it to handle exactly like a Bonneville. It's not going to. It's going to be a little sluggish because of that 21 inch front wheel and it's not going to be as sharp as a pure road bike. But if you're expecting it to handle like a dirt bike, I think you'll be impressed. And I've had a lot of questions over the years about any bike with a 21 inch front wheel, whether it's a Yamaha Tenere 700 or a Honda Africa Twin or whatever. And does it handle like dump because it's got that huge front wheel? Definitely not. I think it's just another example of how the Scrambler design brief is a good blend, in my opinion, of capabilities of a modern machine. I think the suspension is just fine for this kind of thing and just fine for more than this kind of thing, as we'll experiment with later. And I had uh, one comment on social media, which I don't think I saved, some to do with, you know, what's the point of having a 21 inch front wheel and a uh, high exhaust pipe if you don't have any suspension travel? which is a very cynical way to look at this bike. I think it's six and a half inches of suspension travel, 6.7. I'll put it on screen. And that's more than the average street bike for sure. The reason that person probably said that is that the Scrambler XE has something like 10 inches of suspension travel, 9.8, I think. And that's a massive amount. <laughs> it's a huge, tall bike that's really very capable. To look at this bike, you might think, oh, it's got the downgraded suspension, it's got less sophisticated stuff, it's not as good, it's gonna handle worse. I think that's true to some extent, but I also think that it's fair to keep it in mind that the differentiation is large, both on the spec sheet and in the way the bike feels. Don't think that this is cut rate suspension or that it's gonna rattle your skeleton because there's not enough travel, not even close. All right, let's spin this engine up one more time, shall we? Wrap. <laughs> now that I've been riding along in road mode here, I just don't know if I feel a huge difference from rain mode. I've been ranting about this a lot lately on Daily Rider, and I apologize if this seems redundant, but like, if you're gonna give me 11 different modes, like make them different. Why not make rain mode have like 50 horsepower? Like just cut it way down, who cares? If you have another mode that can blow your hair back, then like just use that one. If you're gonna have a rain mode, cut the power more. I don't know. Just uh, a couple of rainy day thoughts from a rainy day guy here. All right, yellow light, red light. We can talk about brakes real fast here. I'm gonna jump on the binder, see if we can engage that ABS. Yeah, and interestingly, it's the first kind of like panic stop I've done in the wet. Actually, grip felt kind of similar to the dry, <laughs> which is to say um, these tires, I think they Metzler Carews maybe, I'm not sure. Um, they're not great, um, you know, for stopping performance in the dry. They're made for a little bit of dirt road and a little bit of looks, whatever standpoint you want to take on that. And the ultimate track is not that great, but in the rain, pretty good. Pretty sharp, actually, I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to experiment one more time with it here. I'm going to go right down this groove where the puddle is. Yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> That's not bad considering it's wet. Uh, yeah, anyway, big, um, big Nissan calipers there. Uh, not very fancy, especially compared to the ones on the on the XE, but um, they do plenty of plenty of stopping. They work just fine. And uh, let's talk about the uh, dash for a moment here. Like I said, this is a sort of a down spec dash. This is basically the same dash from the Trident 660, I believe. Big round face with a little color TFT down here and a uh, two color black and white tachometer fuel gauge uh, speedo up at the top and it's fine but my main complaint I think is that it's just not as stately as the bike is you know like the bike is elegant and kind of majestic and maybe it's not the flagship because it's not the most expensive version of this bike but it's the big one it's the big boy it's the one that many people aspire to have and to give it the same dash from the Trident 660 which I think aside from the 400 singles is the cheapest bike in Triumph's lineup just feels like a little bit of a letdown. It's a little cartoony. It doesn't have the same kind of presence and uh, three-piece suit look as the rest of the bike does, for whatever that's worth. 
All right, so on to one of my favorite parts of the ride where we talk about would you buy this bike just for the engine? How good is the engine? It's a tough one with this bike because the engine is terrific. It's really, really good. The fueling's good. The sound is good. The state of tune is right. It's nicely done. And there's like a little bit of heritage and pedigree there. I really like it. The one complaint that I have, I guess if I was gonna have a major critique is that 270 crank parallel twins are kind of everywhere now. Like it doesn't feel particularly special when an Africa twin and a Tenere 700 and a a CF Moto 450 SS all have the same basic layout and firing order and there uh, on all those bikes and you know it's not necessarily fair to condemn Triumph for that like Triumph making parallel twins for a heck of a long time so I think that they deserve to stand by this engine type and it is great but it gets me wondering when are you gonna do a um you know go back to the whatever it is the the 360 crank or 180 crank I forget um, of yesteryear, you know, like actually actually make them sound like old Bonnevilles again. I wonder if that'll ever happen. Maybe not. I mean, it's just wishful thinking. As far as the world of scramblers go, there are three or four available in Triumph lineup, as we've talked about. There's the Street Scrambler with the small block engine there, I think. And then the 400X that I rode across India with my buddy Spurge in that CTXP episode. And then, of course, the big brother to this one, the XE. The two smaller ones in Triumph's lineup are not as off-road capable as the the bigger ones the 1200s are as we'll experiment with in a minute here and um, that's kind of a theme in elsewhere in motorcycling too there's only really a couple others i think a ducati uh desert sled is one that is um pretty legit off-road bikes got good suspension and they brace the frame and did stuff like that but uh, a lot of other scramblers in the world of motorcycling are kind of just um you know they're just look pieces like the um that Ducati Scrambler 1100, which is a bike that I really like, um, but it's not the same as getting a bike that um, that really seems like it has some some engineering purpose behind it, and that uh, that goes for this bike too. Uh, even though it's not the big XE um, with the with the huge long travel suspension and more sophisticated uh, electronics and modes and stuff like that, and the nicer dash, whatever, whatever, I don't think I'm ready to just classify it as a poser. And one of the reasons is that uh, is that big brother that is super legit as an ADV bike. As for how this one stacks up specifically, well, let's just take a look at the old off-road shortcut. I've got a feeling there's gonna be a little bit of water. Yeah, sure enough. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, if we were ever gonna do it, this would sort of be the bike for it, right? So let's go to, let me get the rest of the way off the road here. Let's go into the modes here. We will go to off-road mode, which um, I went into the settings in the menus here and changed the uh, ABS settings and trash control. So it has off-road ABS, which I believe means you can lock the rear wheel, although it still has front ABS. And then uh, trash control is switched off. Uh, which means you lose the lower part of this dash uh, display here because it um, is telling us that TC is off. All right. Shall we, too? Let's see if we can scramble on this lesser of the two large scramblers through this big old puddle. Not so bad so far. <laughs> I mean, quite smooth. I wonder if I'm going to hit anything that I'm going to regret. Whoa, it's getting pretty deep. <laughs> yeah, set of chairs if anyone wants them. Whoa, okay, getting pretty deep. Whoa, okay, whoa, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Look at it go, getting scrambled. Whoop. Oh, geez. Yeah, this is not something I would recommend on most street bikes. Whew. Okay, we are deep in it now, everybody. Yeehaw. <laughs> and honestly, I'm pretty comfortable. Uh, maybe you don't believe me. And I suppose that would be fair, but um, but yeah, the bike handled it pretty well. Like the suspension soaking stuff up, the the tires are working well enough. It's <laughs> we're scrambling. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Yeah, <laughs> that was wicked. <laughs> Do a couple brodies just to make sure we're we're living life correctly. 
<laughs> uh, traction control was not off, it turns out. It's just in off-road mode, which allows a lot of slip. But not as much as I wanted. I thought I had TC off. Maybe that's something I just learned about the uh, Scrambler 1200X, that you gotta shut off traction control, and then even then it's not shut off. Anyway, yeehaw, am I right? <laughs> that was great. We were frigging up over the front wheel for a minute there, and the thing did awesome. <laughs> um, is it a full, gnarly ADV like its big brother? No, not really. But um, it's closer than you might think. All right, let's do a wheelie for crying out loud. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Does it have a huge amount of power? No. Does it have enough grunt to do a wheelie now and again? Hex to the yeah. <laughs> All right, can we back it in here? Yeah, you bet. Ooh, we're gonna hit the manhole cover. Yeehaw. <laughs> yeah, you can show off ABS. So you can back it in, which is great to have in my opinion. Why the heck not? Let's go for one more, shall we? Yeah, with God, the paint lines are slippery. <laughs> Wicked. Whoa, parking lot is very slippery. My goodness gracious. All right, woo, yeehaw. Get the old adrenal gland pumping at the end of that ride there. And now it's not really raining much, wouldn't you know it? Got splashed in the beginning. Look at all these parking spaces for us. All right, we're gonna cozy up next to this Nissan Rouge and uh, see what we, oop, I messed up. See if we can do a U-turn here, full lock left, feet up. Yeah, two parking spaces, just about two parking spaces, which is pretty good. Um, that is one thing, another kind of benefit, I think, of uh, scramblers is they're often sort of like, if it's got a whiff of off-road about it, then the turning radius can often be pretty good. Someone's in our daily rider spot here. I didn't see my Google Calendar clearly. That's okay, we'll park down the way and we'll take a listen to this engine. Oh my goodness, oh boy, oh boy. Made a real mess, didn't I? <laughs> it looks good though, doesn't it? I think, I think it looks pretty good. Okay, listen to this engine one more time. Great, isn't it? Kind of snappy, kind of snarly. It sounds terrific. It sounds really terrific, especially if it's uh, ripping up a, you know, ripping up a dirt trail or something like that, and you hear it spinning tire and roosting dirt. Good stuff. <laughs> All right, jumping into these Instagram questions here. First one is from Balas Triple Zero. Can you talk about how hot that exhaust gets on your leg? Good question, right? Didn't talk about that at all today because it's <laughs> cold and rainy. But yes, that is the downside to the Scrambler aesthetic and build is that the pipe runs right next to your leg. And yes, you're gonna, I mean, the headers right here are gonna get hot. On a hot day, that's gonna waft back and hit your leg. These heat shields work pretty well. I do have plenty of experience riding scramblers off-road and standing on the pegs. And with your leg against it, it's totally fine. It's not painful or anything, but you are gonna notice heat on the right side of the engine for very, very obvious reasons. And that's something you kind of, um, you know, you give up. It's a sacrifice you make to have the look and feel of a scrambler. But good call out, I'm glad you brought that up. Next question is from Mikey Dan 73 and it goes something like this. If I was loyal to Triumph, why would I choose this over a Tiger 900? Tiger 900, of course, big uh, cross-plane three-cylinder engine and um, kind of a standard mid-size ADV. It's big, capable, et cetera, et cetera. Comes in a wide number of varieties, <laughs> which I'll let you look up on your own time. Question is, why would you get this instead of that bike? I don't know. I'd get this just because it's so pretty to look at it's so much cooler. I, I hate to kind of like follow that trend and just be kind of like, well, it's handsome, but isn't it? I don't know. Like a Tiger 900 does nothing for me as far as how it looks. It just looks like a big generic ADV and it's a capable bike and it's a sweet engine. It's nicely built and it works well. There's nothing wrong with a Tiger 900, the way that it looks or the way that it works. There's just so much right with how this looks. And if you're really the practical type who is you know, like you don't want to deal with the high exhaust pipe. You don't want to worry about no wind protection on the highway, stuff like that. Like the Tiger 900 definitely has benefits. No doubt about it. I'd get this one just because I think it's cool. I like that it reaches for something that most sign of adventure style bikes don't. I like that. But 
if you want capability and comfort, yeah, get a Tiger 900. Next question is from not Ben H who says as a commuter bike, why pick this over a new 400 X? Good question. Uh, no reason really. Yeah. Get a 400 X. I mean, the 400 X is way cheaper. <laughs> uh, it's way smaller. It's way easier to push in and out of your garage. It's going to get you where you're going. Same as this will. It's a question of upgrading and feeling like you're on the bike that you want. I wouldn't even say that the 400 X is too small. I'm six foot two and I fit on it just fine. I think it's built pretty well. I think it works pretty well. I think that if you want to go 75 or 80 down the highway, it's going to feel pretty strained. Whereas this does not you're gonna to have to weigh that and decide what you want but i mean really if you want to get across town and look like you're on a neat kind of retro bike then that 400x is not a bad choice it's just not quite as pure as foundational as legit as the big scrambler is all right last question is from nath norris nath norris nath norris photography who asks if this was a family member which one would it be <laughs> i really like this question uh which family member would the Triumph Scrambler 1200 XB. It's got to be a cool uncle, right? It's it's a cool uncle. It's cool. It's cool uncle Nigel, whatever. Nigel's a cool guy. He's got an air of adventure about him. How come Nigel's not here for this uh, family get together? Yeah, I don't know. He's off in the woods. He's doing something. He's like chopping down trees or like building a cabin or something. We're not sure. There's an air of mystery about Nigel, a whiff of adventure. He's charming and interesting and you don't know everything about him. And nobody really talks about Nigel that much. That's the thing. No one talks about it because his fraternal twin brother, James is the very successful one. James was on TV for a while. He works out all the time. He's muscly, he's good looking. And, and he's the one that everyone's always talking about. Oh, Uncle James, James is so cool. And no one's talking about Nigel. Nigel's just around. Pretty capable dude, pretty cool, pretty interesting. But no one's talking about Nigel because of old Uncle James. Uncle James is the XE, in case you didn't pick up on that. That's who the Scramble 1200X is in the family. It's the cool uncle that isn't maybe the coolest, burliest, most gnarly uncle, but really maybe the one that you'd prefer to live with if you were, <laughs> if you were gonna choose one. The rain has let up. Good timing. Thank you so much, Mother Nature. Uh, thank you guys for sticking around. Uh, just stick around a little bit more, and we'll put this sucker on the Daily Rider leaderboard. What do you think? Okay, okay, everybody. Here we are inside Revzilla West, where it's dry and warm-ish. <laughs> uh, happy to finally be at my destination, just like most rainy rides. And we've got cool Uncle Nigel here on the board, <laughs> ready to be ranked among the other Daily Rider 2024 candidates. As a reminder, uh, the podium right now is um, just the three bikes we've ridden in 2024 so far. You got a Moto Guzzi V100 Mandelo at the top of the board, then a Kawasaki Z900 SE, and the Harley-Davidson Nightster. So where do we think the Scrambler 1200X falls? It's a tricky, it's a tricky business because it's kind of different than, um, than the bikes that are up here. It's like arguably most similar to the V100 Mandelo in that it's a characterful, um, high-end European twin. But it's also kind of like a little more practical and pragmatic than, than that bike in some ways. A little more versatile, that for sure, you know, like trundle down a dirt road, obviously, and have no problem with it. So, and it's sort of like, how do you rank it against the Kawasaki Z900, which is faster and cheaper, uh, and also a great bike. It is very difficult to compare side by side to any of these three bikes individually. The things that come to mind for me when I'm coming to rank this Scrambler 1200X is the seat, which I think is pretty bad. And that's a shame because the rest of the bike is, is better than that. Um, the dash, which is disappointing, but not actually bad. It just sort of isn't as classy as the rest of the machine. So that's not gonna affect this too much. Um, I will give it a tip of the cap for, um, for some versatility. Like I said, you, know, you, you, you have to appreciate a bike that can do all the things we did on the ride today, even if you don't normally do all the things we did on the ride today. The Scramble 1200 XE is a bike that I really, really, really like. I would choose a 1200 XE above any of these bikes. Would I choose an X over these bikes? Probably not. I might choose an X here, I might get a Mandelo first, just because I like it, but it would be close. As far as my recommendation, where it's gonna fall on the Daily Rider leaderboard, it's gonna go here. And this is a struggle. It feels a little weird to me to take a bike that I think is so charismatic and interesting and fun and well-built and just good overall, 
and, and rank it underneath a bike that left me a little cold, the Kawasaki Z900. But if I'm being perfectly honest with myself and with you, which is what I always try to do, I would sooner recommend a Z900. It's just too good. The Z900 is too good. It's too sporty, it's too quick, it's too agile, it's too energetic and, and too comprehensively coherent and, 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 uh, and good uh, to, to recommend over a Scramble 1200X, which is a great bike and super charming. It does have some, some flaws that I don't think the Z900 has. So there you go. The Scramble 1200X is on the Daily Rider leaderboard. Uh, I'm trying to look over here, see if we got anything else we can compare it to. Uh, Triumph Bonneville T100 is here on the 2023 board. It finished in the top five there. It's not as versatile. It's not quite as big and burly and that kind of thing, but it's just a sweeter package in general, I think. That would be, that would be a close one. I would certainly get the Scrambler, but I, again, I think I'd be sooner to recommend a T100. All right, that's probably enough uh, wandering around through my thoughts here. I'm gonna uh, go change my shirt and then do some work. And um, I hope that wherever you are, you're warm and dry. And of course, that you enjoyed this daily ride. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. Later, everybody. Oh, yeah, that's the good stuff. That's why lane splitting should be legal. Because when a car drives through a puddle and you get splashed in the chest, you deserve to go to the front of the line at a stoplight. Seems like a small price to pay.